Well, not only or uh, digging in preparations coming COP27 in November, but also a presidential initiative under the title Decent Life for Climate Res Resilience uh, or Resilient Africa. So President Abdel Fattah Sisi have initiated a campaign or an initiative to uh, uh, launch it all over Africa to make it a climate change resilient uh, continent. And with us live over the phone is uh, Her Excellency Ambassador uh, Mona Omar, a former Assistant for, uh, Foreign Minister uh, for African Affairs. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Your Excellency. Good morning, good morning, dear. Good morning to you and How to all the speakers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, Decent Life Initiative, the new Decent Life Initiative for a Resilient Africa. Uh, that was initiated by uh, the head of state, President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Of course, this is great news, especially that we are receiving uh, leaders from worldwide and visitors, probably people who haven't even heard about what's happening really or touching what's happening in Egypt. Uh, and one of our golden opportunities to uh, send the message and reflect to the whole world our continuous efforts to save the world and save the continent we're living in. But, but my question to you is why Africa in particular, among the most vulnerable uh, continents uh, to climate change impacts, despite having uh, contributed to the least global warming and having the lowest emissions, almost 4%. Yes, uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the, the initiative about the distant life is a great initiative that will suit the African continent because we have very, very similar conditions. The villages that are spread in Africa, this lifts up from the government, the African government. Number two, in COP27, we are representing Africa. So our initiative has to be really concentrating on our continent and how to ameliorate, ameliorate the conditions for the living people and population in this continent. As you said, the continent is the least contributing in the pollution and all the uh, problems of the climate change, but we are uh, of most of the, uh, what, what we call the symptoms of the climate change in our continent. And this is affecting the economy affects uh, even uh, the movement of people uh, uh, emigrating from the continent because of the floods, because of the famine, because of the desertification. All of these are very dangerous and important uh, uh, elements. So if we really adapt the initiative of different life to, uh, um, to this condition, I think it will be a great achievement for the continent. Right. Your Excellency, but don't you agree with me that 80% uh, of the practices or the threats that are uh, threatening the environment and the ecosystem and disturbing the biological balance are, ma are man-made and should be uh, regulated by enforcing and harshening more environmental harsh laws to be able to prevent it and save the world? Yes, you are completely right. I do agree with you. And uh, this is why I think this conference is important. It will be uh, like a turnover for the whole world. We have been receiving a lot of promises from the donor countries and from the uh, developed countries that were really the cause of uh, most of these uh, symptoms of the climate change uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the reuse of the technology. But uh, this time uh, we are uh, really throwing the responsibility and expecting to have practical solutions and financial uh, real solution because they donated before, but it was not really uh, happening. Mm. Right. Uh, from your own point of view, what are the dangers that are uh, posed for the continent in Africa uh, that might be 
uh, considered as issues of, uh, um, that, that could cause climate change in Africa? That could cause. Right. I mean, bes yeah. bes besides, of course, uh, I mean, destroying the forest, besides the illegal hunting, besides the destroying the endangered species, be 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 besides the to toxic waste, be be besides the economic greed of the developed countries that are, uh, um, uh, I mean, polluting Africa. Uh, I mean, there are so many crimes that are uh, committed There are in so Africa. many crimes, as you mm. said, but uh, I also mentioned before that we have the problems of desertification, which is a big, mm. big problem in our continent. Mm. And uh, this is creating famine. It is creating uh, uh, the movement of people outside the, the areas where they live to really seek for means and ways to live. We have the problem of water, the scarcity of water in, in some of the countries, not in all of them, because some of them have abundant uh, resources, water resources. So mm. all of this, plus the man-made problems like the wars and the uh, civil unrest and uh, all of these uh, uh, things that we are witnessing in, in uh, Africa, all of this is creating really an atmosphere and uh, uh, an environment for the Africans that is not enabling them to pursue their goals towards the uh, sustainable development. And uh, this is very uh, important. Even we are not able to establish the uh, convenient structure for them because of these uh, elements. Of course, uh, it seems that uh, issues are related together and roads are leading uh, to uh, each other. So, uh, as we can see that climate change is leading uh, to uh, poverty and poverty is leading to food scarcity or climate change is leading to food scarcity and of course water scarcity also. Uh, food insecurity also uh, is, is, is another issue that is very dangerous. And it's threatening the continent, really. So um, what's your intake about this? And how do you think uh, the continent is going to address it? Uh, I think we need the real effort. And uh, maybe uh, it will not be in COP27 on its own. But we have so many other initiatives going on in the continent to make use of our own resources. We have to uh, really uh, industrialize. The, the, the problem, the main problem, the main economic problem is that our resources in Africa are uh, just exported raw as they are. And then they come back to us with a higher price and we are paying all of this. So uh, one of the main objectives is really to make use of our own natural resources and also the capacity building of the people of the continent. Well, now we have a, a higher percentage of people that are, have been educated. We have a good uh, elite of uh, technical people in the continent, but we still need a lot to be done because the, the real population in all the villages all over Africa are not really uh, uh, benefiting from the technology and from the advancement that happened in all the uh, world. Uh, Your Excellency, the Minister of Environment has also spoke about the Decent Life Initiative, Resilient Africa, and said that this initiative is going to work in collaboration with the UNDP uh, of the United Nations, of course, and uh, uh, their work is going to focus over enhancing the adaptive capabilities and capacities of rural communities inside the continent. And also, uh, there is an initiative that would enable the African women's adaption uh, to ensure better opportunities for these women, of course, uh, in uh, informal settlements and in uh, low-income brackets and enable them for, t for a better life and, of course, uh, setting awareness amongst them. Yeah, this is very important. You uh, really touch a very important uh, point, which is women and the role of women in uh, uh, fighting all of the uh, uh, consequences of the climate change. This is uh, very important, and we have to create awareness. 
the Minister of Environment uh, is right to uh, present such an initiative. And I think we have so many other initiatives. We have a full day uh, during the COP27 uh, about gender and climate change. And uh, during this day, everything related to women rule mm. uh, will be uh, really uh, touched upon. Right, Your Excellency Ambassador Mona Amer, former assistant. Omar. Foreign... <laughs> Mona Omar, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, former assistant uh, foreign minister for African affairs would like to thank you so much and you have a beautiful day thank you so much and I guess uh, by this we come to the end of uh, this edition of the breakfast show we're going to see you back once again the same time tomorrow and until then you have a beautiful day